Welcome to Salt Lake City. I'm Steve. Uh, Derek is off running Christmas errands. Um, I wanted to, to do something real quick and use one of my favorite tools to do it. It's a 45 watt CO2 laser. I've had it for about a year um, and I've done all sorts of stuff with it. I've, I've used it to cut uh, this out of wood, which is kind of a cool pattern, engraved on obsidian. Um, I've etched metal. Um, I've done all sorts of things. What I haven't done is one of the things they show in their highlight video, which is shoot it at a MacBook Pro and etch the surface of it. It's something I've wanted to do since I got it, but I haven't had the guts to do it. I've had it for about a year now, and um, I'm gonna throw my MacBook Pro and into the Glowforge here and uh, shoot it with a 45 watt laser and etch the Salt Lake City logo into the back of it. A couple things about the Glowforge that are really cool. This is a um, this is a consumer grade laser. It's expensive for sure, but it's not unrealistically out of the reach of of, of everybody. It's not a fifty thousand dollar laser that somebody like Lucas Films might have. Um, this is made for um, commercial and uh, residential use. Um, this is the Pro model, so it's a little bit higher uh, power, a little bit faster, um, and it has a pass through, meaning I can take material um, as long as I want and continue to pass it through the Glowforge, um, and I could do a six foot sheet of metal and, and work my way through it, or I can do something as small as a piece of obsidian here. I love it because Whatever I imagine, I can do. Really, you come up with it on the computer, you throw it out to the app, you use vector files, you throw it back to your, your, your Glowforge, you hit go and you're good to go. It's really an amazing piece of equipment and thank you to the people of Glowforge for coming up with it and making something like this available. Just like my 3D printer, it rarely goes unused. Um, almost never sits here dormant. But really, it's whatever you can imagine. Glowforge has a bunch of uh, designs on their site. You can go to Thingiverse and download designs there. Any vector file you want, and then any, if you have a JPEG or a PDF, and just slap it on there and engrave it. One cool thing that Glowforge does is you can see right here, this is, this is what they call proof grade material, and it has a QR code right here. If I put this into the Glowforge, the camera recognizes exactly the, the type of material, so the density and the width of the material, so it adjusts the laser automatically for those settings. If I were to draw on here, I can take the image and then I can copy that, that image that I draw and, and replicate it as much as I'd like to. I'm gonna show you how it's used and then I'm gonna take the laptop over to Derek's and show him what I've come up with. So, this is how you work with the Glowforge. You go into any browser, I'm using Chrome here, um, and you can see this is the image of the camera um, in the Glowforge that I just pointed out to you. There's my Mac. So first thing you do is you go over here and you say, I'm gonna go ahead and it recognizes it's a MacBook Pro. Go ahead and select that. And that's important because the different materials that you engrave and cut with uh, required different intensities of the laser, as well as different speeds, uh, etc. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to go ahead and upload an image. Okay, I'm, I'm uploading an image. It processes, sets it into steps, and will automatically put it right there. The really, one of the really cool things is I can say, I'm going to go ahead and engrave this. And then I can place it exactly where I want. I can say, for example, let's increase this a little bit. Put it down right here. If I go in here into the settings, I can say, for example, I want to vary the power or maximize the quality. It already knows all of the settings that I need to have with a couple of options that I have in here. And I can say, I want to maximize my space or I want to maximize the quality because this is my Mac definitely maximize the quality. Then all I need to do is go over here and hit print. You can see it's preparing the design. Okay, this is a warning that I'm not using proof grade materials. This is a Mac which um, they give me that warning. I've got an hour and 20 minutes um, and then my Mac will be all pretty. So let's go uh, down to the forge to where the next step is.
we always look for projects all the time, including with our vehicles. Hey, Derek! Yeah! It's the Meekmobile! <laughs> Introducing our biggest project. This will be our biggest project. <laughs> I'm not really a car guy. Like, I'm not constantly under the hood of my Nissan Versa and, like, tinkering with the insides because it's a Nissan Versa. But. The only reason you get a Jeep is so you can play with it. It's infinitely modular. Yes, it's like Legos for adults. For big kids. We just got this. It's a our it's 2018 JL. So um, part of our projects that we're going to do optimizing the features. Listen, we live in the West, uh, so exploring the West in Nissan Versa is simultaneously <laughs> sad and impractical. Unadvisable. We don't know what we're going to do with it yet. But we know it's going to be fun. We're going to have fun with it. So Is unadvisable or is it inadvisable? Inadvisable. inadvisable. It's inadvisable. <laughs> uh, All right. Well. Introducing the Jeep. Yeah. Now, I brought something else I want to show you. What's that? Let's go inside and we'll show you the, the project on the door porch. Okay. Cool. Derek, you haven't seen this yet. Not yet. But uh, I have the results of the laser etched uh, computer, laptop. From the Glowforge. From the Glowforge that we shot the 45 watt laser at. <laughs> I want to show it to you. Awesome. So, oh, yeah. this is it. That looks awesome. Yeah, a um, couple of things. It's really sharp. You notice if you feel it here, you don't feel. Yeah, you can't tell. You can't even tell. A couple things I learned. Number one, I was putting a square in the bed of the Glowforge, and the Glowforge has a camera mm -hmm. that goes over the top, and it uses that to focus. Okay. Um, so it knows the depth, and if something's too big or too little. Um, the problem is, this mirrored logo right here uh, is mirrored. Sure. And it was right down, so it was trying to mirror off itself. So it, so so it didn't it, want to focus on a mirror. Right. Sure. So I had a hard time with that. Um, so. I actually took some painter's tape and put it over the top, and you can see that in the in the time lapse. Mm -hmm. But um, I was really surprised it didn't it didn't etch on the mirror at all. Mm -hmm. And then in a couple spots right here, you can see where there was a little tape. So next time I'm using painter's tape and I'm etching a portion like this, I need to make sure that I cut exactly. Yeah, cut it out like exactly where you want it to be masked. Right, right, right. The the next thing I noticed if these little dots along here. Uh, yeah, these dots right here. Um, I didn't center the head the first time when I hit right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I think part of that had to do with the, the mirroring effect. Sure. It threw it off. So uh, I reset it and we went and I actually kind of think it looks kind of cool. Well, it's it sort of goes with our whole philosophy of like, this is the first time you've done this type. Well, I mean, we've used the Glowforge before, but this is the first time you've used it to etch on, a, on this type of laptop. Right. Yeah. This type of surface. Yep. So... It kind of perfectly goes with our whole philosophy of we're going to screw up. Yeah, and that's completely fine. The, the next thing is right along here, see how it changes color actually. Yeah, there's like a bit of a gradient. And that's because if you look at the profile there on the edge of the laptop, it goes down. So it's going, to, it's going to affect the, fo the, the focal focus point of yeah. the laser. So I think next time we want to make sure that we don't laser etch anything that's like this on something that has a curve to it at all. Sure. Um, other than that, I think, you Tur tell me what you think, I think it looks awesome. Yeah, it turned out great. I have the first Salt Lake City Edition MacBook. Um, That's something to be proud of. It is something to be proud of. And uh, maybe we'll sell one in our store one day. That'd be awesome. If when we have a store. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, one last thing. I had a little scratch right there. Mm -hmm. That's because life hack. Don't throw your laptop into your laptop bag when there are keys already in there. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's advisable. That's good advice. But it had nothing to do with the laser. Um, so if you liked it, this is what happens when you shoot a 45 watt laser at your MacBook Pro. Um, we're doing more stuff like this, uh, so make sure you you subscribe and you you like our content if you like it. If you don't like it, um, leave a nasty comment on somebody else's channel. That'd be awesome. <laughs>
share this around. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us and uh, go make something. <laughs>